Hello everyone, it's Andrzej Krzywda from Arkency here. Uh, I've just had a conversation with um, with a wannabe programmer who is trying to get his first internship or junior job as a Rails programmer. And I can't really share all the details because it would be a too long story, but I can try to share with you some tips which I advised to this person um, how to improve his chances of getting a job. Uh, some of the tips might be out of context a little bit, but I will try to uh, do my best here. So, first of all, let me just say that it's the the job market uh, in almost every programming language communities or industry is a bit uh, weird because on one hand we are lacking good programmers overall, so the industry actually needs thousands or millions of programmers. Uh, but uh, and at the same time, there are thousands, uh, thousands, if not millions, uh, young aspiring programmers or people changing their jobs who try to get to the industry. So it sounds like there should be a match, right? But there is no match because the, the, the people here who are just trying to get there, they don't have the skills enough to, to actually satisfy the needs of the companies. And there is a huge gap in between. And some companies are not willing to invest the time to grab the person, train them and get it there because they really have no um, guarantee that it will work and they have no guarantee that once they train them, they will stay with them. It's a very complicated process. So I feel your pain if you are trying to get to this industry right now and it doesn't work. I feel how tr frustrating it must be to read all those articles about how the industry needs more programmers but you're trying your best and you can't get the job, you even don't get any reply from the companies. And uh, so here are some of my tips. Uh, one of them is uh, you need to understand uh, how, even it, it's even though it sounds hard, that you are a potential big cost for the company that will try to maybe get you as an intern or as a junior. You will be a cost because the time um, their people need to spend on educating you and training you is very, very expensive. We are talking about senior rates, which are, you know, somewhere between, I don't know, $40 to $100 an hour. So if they will spend this time on training you, this is exactly the time that they will, that the cost that they will have. Uh, and it means that whatever amount of money they will pay you, even if you work for free, you are still a cost for the company. And you need to understand that, not be frustrated by that, because that's the fact. Um, and you need to understand to be empathetic with the company and the people in the company. This will help you to get there, or maybe it will help you to find good arguments why it might be worth investing in you. Because from the company perspective, you are an investment. Investment is always a risk. So this is like kind of like economic basics economy basic, sorry for if it's like too easy overall. Uh, second tip will be like second part of the tips will be around making it easier for people, for company to learn about you. So uh, just sending the resume is really not enough. Um, right now a developer resume should consist of a GitHub uh, profile, which has, you know, uh, lots of projects in there. People will look at your commits. Each of your commit message is like a communication how you work. Um, so try to make it the best you can. Try to improve your um, documentation skills. So whatever project you have there, even if it's just a simple block application, the typical CRUD application, try to document why you created it, uh, what kind of techniques you use, and the Git commits should show a nice history of why it happened. And the problem I see with many uh, people who try to, you know, find a job with their GitHub is that there's usually like three, four, five repositories and two of them or three of them are actually clones of some other repositories existing. So this doesn't build my trust uh, that this person is actually, you know, able to create new Rails applications very easy. And the Rails, where it shines, is to actually to be able to create new Rails applications, simple applications, very easily. So please show that in your profile. Create a block application, a very simple application to track customers, a very simple application for books that you have read, a very simple application for your daily journal, whatever. Like <clears throat> try to or some to-do application. So do the I know many people think okay I, it's just too easy to show that no it's not too easy just show that you're fluent with those because maybe the company actually the companies they have the plan to create um, a bunch of smaller 
applications just maybe as an experiment, as an investment. So again, feel, try to think in terms of how the company thinks, not in terms of how you think it works. Uh, your blog. I think uh, blog, the moment where blogs were super important was even now is like too late overall. Like five years ago, having a blog was something awesome. Now it's not, still not something that will make you different, but still it will make you different from, I don't know, 90% of other people who apply for the jobs. So having an active blog where like at least every week you try to document what you learned every week and even this basic stuff, just do it because this will show you not only the thing that you learned, it's showing your discipline, your, your, you know, systematic, that you're a systematic person, your communication skills, your English, English skills. <clears throat> there are lots of things that, uh, blog can show to the person reading this and it's showing the progress. So I can look, okay, one year ago, this person was learning about validations. Now this person is learning about service objects. I can, I know the Ruby learning path, Ruby developers learning path. I know where you are right now. So it, it can help me. Uh, the next tip is around, uh, as I said, blogs are no longer the hottest thing to do. Um, the, the, the thing that I'm trying to recommend is maybe controversial, but I think video is the format right now. So even though, for example, this video is a way of communicating to you, but if you record a video and put it on your YouTube, YouTube channel, so start a YouTube channel and, and just you know, document what you learn by just explaining this as I'm doing this, if it's some less uh, technical stuff or just by recording uh, a screencast. Uh, this is like a blog on steroids. This is like easier way of sharing who you are. Now I can see your face, I can hear, I can see how you communicate, especially for the companies which have offices. We don't, but if those companies have, companies have offices, um, they will get make it easier for them to imagine how you would fit for the company which is not controversial people shouldn't be judged by how they look obviously but uh but it's mostly about the way how you communicate because have, seeing you on a video is exactly like seeing you sitting here in the on the desk nearby so that's something very similar uh my next tip is because i see that many developers apply through the official channels which is the proper way to do overall but uh, there are the less official channels which might be more effective. So if you are applying through the, I don't know, jobs at whatever the name of the company.com, usually the email will get to the HR people and they will receive lots of, um, lots of resumes. So we'll just end up in a database and no technical person will actually, will actually see you. So the technique can be that you can try to, um, get some relation and find the developers working at the company, but don't try to contact them like totally blindly and with this copy and paste message, but maybe you can ask this developer how it is to work at this company. I don't think this would be considered a spam. Um, maybe ask them if they really think this company is a good fit for, for a newbie pr programmer, what you can do to, to get there. Maybe this, they can help you at some moment. So don't try to make it, you know, clearly that you just trying making this a treat but you know be a human person uh, those developers they have limited time for you so um, don't waste their time on just tr you trying to sell yourself to them but think how you can help them also from economical perspective uh, in many companies there is this program where the developers if they bring a person to the company and the person is recruited they will get a bonus so some of them may, may actually have an interest in that so uh, it's worth knowing. Um, my next tip is about attending meetups, especially if you're close to a bigger city or you can get there within, I don't know, one hour. You know, attend as many meetups as you can. Uh, maybe even if you're not the person who easily make new friends at such meetups, uh, at least you will get familiar with the vocabulary people are using at those meetups, especially the technical meetups. But also, even if you're, if you're a Ruby programmer, go to the Python meetup. Very often the things they will you will learn there the vocabulary you will learn, the people you learn, that you now between Python and Ruby, there's almost not like no difference. So attend Python, JavaScript meetups, like whatever technical meetups you can, because your current problem usually at the beginning of your path is that you, there are a huge number of words which mean nothing to you, but actually being part of the programming industry requires you to know at least, at, at least a little bit what serverless is about, uh, what is the web assembly thing, so we don't, you don't have to need to know the details, but you need to know where to put this label on and know how to learn more. 
Uh, and the next point, because the, um, very often some people who are looking for the Ruby jobs or other jobs, they somehow need to survive, live by in between they find a job. And very often they go to some uh, physical jobs, like they work in the stores, shops, uh, fabrics or something like that. So if your job is allowing this, you, maybe you can spend some of your time to use your headphones or something like that and you know listen to Ruby podcasts and a few people I was mentoring um, was doing that so they again those podcasts are not for you to learn the precise techniques but get familiar with the vocabulary so uh, because those on those podcasts usually the developers appear there so you will hear how developers communicate and this will help you get there in the end so that's my last tip uh, I'm not really the expert here, so don't follow my advices too closely. I did help some of the people to find jobs in the, in the among the Rails companies. We've had this uh, junior Rails developer class in the past. Now I'm wondering whether we should reactivate that because it was like three years ago the last time we did that. So it was an online class for doing this. Uh, and we, we stopped we stopped doing this because it required really a lot of work and a lot of time from on our side, but maybe we can reactivate this. So let me know what other problems you have by finding a job or if you are a company which is looking for, which is considering also junior Ruby developers or interns, uh, let me know what are your requirements because I might be able to help you find some good people, interesting people. Uh, yeah, so let me know like what, what are your current problems if you're looking for the job or if you're looking for the people because uh, I not, might, might not be up to date with all the you know, things that are required nowadays. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.